So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at OSINT, or Open Source Intelligence. This is essentially the methodology of gathering information that's publicly available about a person or a domain or an email or a handle or really anything associated that we want to gain information about. Um, there are a lot of different ways to do this. Of course, Google searching and just like running through different social media networks and different search engines is something that we're able to do ourselves to be able to gather this information. However, there are built-in tools in Kali Linux that allow us to gather this information as well. Uh, one of which is called Maltigo, which we'll be going over now, as well as um, the Harvester, which is another one that is used um, to be able to gather this sort of information. The way that we access these is through the Start menu. We can go to Information Gathering, OS Int Analysis, and then Maltigo will be the first one that we'll take a look at here. Inside of Maltigo, we can go ahead and create a new graph just by typing or clicking on this icon here. Once we do this, we're able to create a new, what's called a graph of information about whatever we're targeting. So for instance, the first thing that we'll do is we'll target a specific domain and it will essentially show us the way that this domain is associated with different things and sort of keep going down the levels until we get to the, the last sort of endpoints. So as an example, I'm gonna grab a domain here from the left-hand side and click and drag it into the graph. I'm going to double click on it and I can type in whatever URL I want here now. So as an example, let's do Kali.org, which is the Kali Linux um, distribution website. When I press OK here, I can right click and there's a number of different transformations that exist. These transformations are essentially different queries that we can run um, to determine information about the Kali.org domain. These are those information like DNS servers, email addresses, files and documents, domain owners. Um, we can run all transformations that will give us all the information that possibly exists just by hitting the run all button. When we do this, it will load all the information and then display it to us here. So you can see here, there's a ton of information that's available to us from the Kali Linux domain. When we click on something here, so for instance, if I click on this um, RDS here, you'll see that we'll see the actual information on the right hand side that's associated with it. So each thing that we click on, we can see information about it um, as we zoom in and out. So when we can see these endpoints here, we can click on these and see um, that they're typically people associated with things. Um, it'll try to map people to the domains, it'll try to map people to the email addresses, it'll try to map people to devices and that sort of idea. So you can see, we really get a lot of different information from this actual query itself. We can understand what DNS servers exist, what different servers in general exist on the domain, um, what email addresses are associated with it, um, what users or people are associated with it. And there's a lot of different value that can come out of this. Some um, different phone numbers, for instance, that are associated with it. Um, even external sort of addresses that are used for support, for instance, can be found from this. So. The reason why these things might be valuable, there's a few different reasons, right? For one, we're getting a really good picture of the things that exist in terms of servers that are running on the back end or DNS um, information, which is something that we've tried to gather in the past as well. Um, it gives us a lot of information about the actual attack surface. It gives us emails that are associated with Kali, which could be useful for things like phishing attacks. We could, for instance, email people posing as one of these email addresses or find a target that we can email to, to try to convince them to do something, for instance. So those are the sort of things that you can do. And in addition, it gives you things like people's full names and such. We can look up these people then and determine information about them. So a lot of this is very helpful and useful information. So this would be an example of how we can resolve a domain through Multigo. We could do more things than just domains. Um, for instance, let me go ahead and start a new graph here. And there's a few other ones here that are very interesting and useful. Um, let's take a look here. Alias is one that's relatively useful. We can look up an alias as in like a username that somebody uses, and then we can determine any services that are registered with that username, therefore telling us um, where they might potentially be registering their users. So um, we can really pick any sort of username here. Um, for instance, uh, let's say I'll just put my full name here, Scott Cosentino. When I go to resolve this, you'll see that again, I get a whole bunch of different information that exists. So two social accounts is probably the best one to do. It'll give you sort of all the general social media accounts through namecheck.com. I think it's namecheck.com. 
Um, and this essentially just queries all the social media domains to see if a username is available or taken. So let's run this. And you'll see it will run it and it will eventually return back where this name is registered. You'll see it was registered to these are the domains here, Facebook, this one's Pinterest, this one's Twitter, uh, PayPal, Bitbucket, GitHub, uh, Flipboard, and SlideShare. So all of these have a user registered with my full name. That could potentially be me. It could be somebody else with a similar name who took my username. Um, but this gives us a bit of a picture of where this user exists. So again, if we're looking to target a specific user, we could figure out what services they use, say, hey, um, we're looking at your Facebook account with this username, um, click on this link to reset the password, and that will give us a little bit of credibility. Um, a similar sort of idea exists for email addresses. So we could put in email addresses, for instance. Um, I'll put in one of my email addresses here. So using this email address, again, we can do different transformations like related email addresses. We'll try all transformations and see what it gives us. You'll see in this case, it just maps to gmail.com and says that the email exists. This might seem like trivial information, but it is fairly useful. You know, it at least tells us that the email actually exists, that it's a valid email and it's with Gmail. We might not always know the domain that something's associated with. So this is a good way to be able to figure out that information. So there's a lot of different information inside of here that's very helpful for us and you're able to go through and try out some of these on your own. Um, for now, I'm going to close out of Multigo and we'll take a look at another application that exists on here called the Harvester, which gives us sort of similar information. And again, this is under OS Int and it's called the Harvester. So you see that the Harvester has very similar information that works specifically with domains. So we could take a domain and we can do port scans on it, sort of similar to Nesis. Um, but we can also scan for um, specific um, like searches, say like Baidu or Bing or Google. Um, and let me give you an example. So I can say the harvester and we'll give it a domain that's my domain. And let's go ahead and we're going to search it on Google. You see what this will do is it will search a certain number of results from Google. The number of results is customizable by the limit parameter, this hyphen L or hyphen limit. And essentially it will default to 500 and it will search all of Google to see if there are any emails associated, any IPs associated, any hosts associated. Mine isn't very interesting. Um, oh, mostly because I spelt it wrong. So let's spell it right and try that again. Um, and then after this, I'll show you one with Kali.org because it's got a bit more interesting information associated with it. So we'll just wait for this to finish here so you can see exactly what the results look like. And as you can see here in this case, it just found the one host and resolved it to an IP address sort of similar to what our DNS uh, resolutions were doing. Now, if I look at something like um, Kali.org, for instance, You'll see that I'll get a lot more interesting information. It will actually associate it with some email addresses, with some hosts, very similar to the information that Multigo is giving us, but um, not quite as in-depth, I would say, as Multigo, but a bit quicker. Um, it's mostly free, whereas Multigo has licensing involved with it. Um, so this is a good one to use for sort of like a free, quick alternative. You'll see it finds a whole bunch of um, associated hosts. It finds a whole bunch of emails that are associated with it. So this is really good information. So just going back to the help page here, um, taking a look at the different sources that exist. Some of the ones that might be of interest are things like LinkedIn, for instance. Um, if I search up Kali Linux on LinkedIn, um, I might be able to find people who are associated with Kali, who work there, who work with them, who do things involving it. So um, that could be very useful information for us to have. Um, and then again, the rest of these are just different um, search engines, right? Like Bing and DuckDuckGo. Um, you can click GitHub to see if they have any code associated with them. Um, Google, of course, uh, Yahoo, right? Virus Total will tell us if any viruses are associated with the domain or anything like that. So yeah, just really a whole bunch of different um, sources that we can look up basic information from. So this is a really good alternative if you just want a quick and simple search on a domain of some sort. Um, the Harvester will work really well for us. So this gives you an idea of the two different types of open source um, intelligence tools that are existing in Kali Linux. Again, these give us a good ability to sort of expand our attack surface and understand things that are associated with the service that we're attempting to attack.